everyone, and welcome to the episode of Showcase on Warframe. Today's item, the Daiku. Now, some of other people watching this probably wondering, you already did the Daiku Showcase. Well, I made that video before Ribbons. Now, I have a ribbon for it, I'll do the ultimate build for it. The old video's gone, it's deleted. Anyway, the Daiku here is a bit of a strange bow compared to the others, and we'll get into that later. So, base wise, you can see the accuracy is 16.87 which is better when it claims. Charge rate is 1.75, which is longer than most bows. Critical chance is only 20%, which is on the lower end compared to other bows. But critical multiplier is 2.0, which is plenty. Fire rate is regardless, is 1.0, which is kind of to your charge rate. Magazine of 1, of course. Noise is silent. Has innate punch through a 3.0, like every other bow. And reload of 0.6. And status of a heavy 50% chance. So, and plenty of damage to be as we can see but there's a few catches with that. But first, where do you get it? Well, if you go into your dojo, you'll find an antenna lab on the third row. So, when making the Daiku bow, you'll need 20,000 credits, 2 neurons, 1,200 salvage, and 300 rubido, and 1 forma. So, in terms of using bows, as many people can guess, the DPS is kind of shit. Well, it's a bow and arrow. It wasn't exactly invented yesterday. But moving on to visuals, while the Daiku is the largest of all the bows, it's also a bit strange looking compared to most. Now, I don't, I'm no specialist on bows. Never will be. But as you notice, the bow has an extra protrusion in front, which it gives the bleed more pull, hence the idea of more damage. But of course, the more damage means you have less critical chance to balance it. Now, the arrows, as you see, are a little more flat on the end with barbs. So yeah, and you got a lot of protrusions, unnecessarily if not so, on this. But you actually see there's a stereotypical viewfinder on it. A little iron sight, if you will. Neat. Now, when you fire the weapon, you can see that in a second, when I do resume time, and it's gone. That's at 0.1 speed there. So that arrow flies to the air incredibly quick. Now, I didn't really compare it to the other bows, but I believe it's probably one of the faster ones. If so, if not, oh well. It's besides the point. There still is travel time, though, with every projectile. But now, the big disadvantage. With great damage comes great responsibility. And your responsibility is, you must fully charge the bow each and every time to fire your arrow. That is the big disadvantage of the Daiku. Not a huge problem in PvP, where it actually does pretty good, but in PvE, in every other scenario, it's a big hindrance. An annoying one at that. So here's some other extra something I'm gonna do a little extra. Uh, you can see I'm in the planes, which is becoming more and more part of Warframe, whether I like it or not. Now, using a bow in the planes, it's maybe not the best idea in the world. Now, fault damage fall off or drop is not really a problem as we're seeing here. You can hit very far off targets without too much of a struggle. It's just a matter of your opponent and how many there are, and how dynamic they can they can be. Now, the majority of the enemies, of course, be the Grenier, but there's sometimes other enemy types here. But as you can see, in terms of range, at 170, which is as far as I can actually aim at this before things disappear, you can see that it's not too difficult to hit something. It takes a couple of tries, but I wouldn't normally fight anyone at this range anyway, unless I had a sniper rifle on me. But yes, the main problem is DPS. That's where all bows lack. Almost all bows lack. And Adeku has the worst DPS of them all, because you must charge up each arrow individually. But yeah, missing a target is more painful than ever in a weapon of this stature. <laughs> Where the bows can quickly charge up half a shot and just let it go because you knew it would kill an opponent, it is not the case for Adeku. So yeah, so Adeku is not for very many people if I had to argue it. <laughs> Only for the most accurate of individuals, and in the planes, Probably a very poor choice of weapon to take, unless you really got an ultimate savage build, which I heavily doubt that, compared to other weapons that is. Speaking of builds, here's my ultimate build for it, with the Riven Mind tech. Now, accuracy remains the same, charge rate you see I significantly dropped to 0.6, because I hate waiting that long to charge up an arrow. Critical chance I got to 95%, which is plenty, although there'll be no red criticals where I'm going. Alright, other than that, we got the uh, critical multiplier of 4.4, .4, which we have more with later rounds. Fire rate, which is irrelevant, I guess, is 2 per second, but yeah, we know that's not true. 
Okay, and puncture remains the same. Reloads lower, but besides the point. And ribbon suspicion is four orbs out of five. My status chance is 95%, 0.3, so that's pretty high. And my damage is 1400 puncture, both the 475 slash and impact, and plus the 1425 toxin. Now, was here my choice? I could have took a elemental or a critical. Now, in my opinion, elemental builds are kind of shit without DPS. And I think everyone understands now that Daiku is no DPS weapon. So I went full on with the critical and put a little, sprinkle a little bit of status at the end with the, with the toxin there. Now moving on to my ribbon. I got plus 79% reloading speed, which is pointless in this weapon. But however, I kept it because plus 225% critical chance. I couldn't exactly scoff at that when this weapon only starts at 20%. Then negative 28% magazine capacity, which is a throwaway thing that doesn't affect this weapon at all. I do wonder if I got a negative 100% magazine capacity. And my all thoughts of fantasy aside, let's take it to a test. So, first test, you can see my arrow charge rate is actually acceptable now. It's akin to the Paris Prime. So it's actually good. This seems usable now. Now, let's have a test. Uh, let's go ahead and some Grenier, one of the most preferred target, and we'll grab a good handful of them. Now, the level, which I originally put to level 80, was a bit too weak. So we're going to jack it up a little higher, about to 90, eh, 100. So there you go. So with initial expectations shattered, as you see, boom, a headshot will deliver a kill. However, the important thing is I want to test is body shots. As you see, body shots take multiple hits, but from the head, you're guaranteed a kill pretty much at level 100. But of course, a headshot is not always available. Now. When enemies are traveling sideways with this weapon, it's usually a problem because, again, travel time for your projectiles. Now, the reason why I chose Toxin is you do pretty much almost guarantee a proc of Toxic, or Silver Game Claims, but, but that will kill enemies as you see rapidly if I do hit them. They often die of Toxin very quickly. I'll shoot another guy as an example. Let's see. Pop and dies of Toxin. That's at level 100. Very nice. And, oh, okay, fell off the edge. That still counts as a kill, right? Next test, we'll go against some Corpus. Grab some Moas, arguably probably a poor weapon to fight Corpus with with a bow, because they have every dynamic range to attack you with, and you use it very frequently. Where Moas often go point blank while the crewmen hang back. We're going to mainly rely on a ranged attacks, not too much in terms of point blank. So, the Moas here. Lining up nicely, you can see that eh, you can get if you get the headshots or backpack hits, you get a nice one hit kill. But otherwise, it's two hits. But you can also work the use that punch through because the moles are very stupid and like they gather in groups and you can sometimes line up two of them in one shot. Sometimes, although to be fair, in this scenario, I'd be dead many times over with how many bullets they're putting into me. <laughs> so this scenario is not exactly common, and you survive it. <laughs> Although the damage is acceptable against a level 100 MOA. Probably better test against level 90s, but eh, besides the point. There's an acceptable amount of damage here. Hello. Oh, well. Okay, only one faction left. And that is the infestation. Now let's take the infestation, which I initially had a, at level 100, but we're going to jack up a little higher. We're going to jack him to uh, level 120? Yeah, 125, sure. Alright. So at level 125, against the charges anyway, you can see that easy kills. And with the fire faster charge rate, this one's actually usable. If I had the original charge rate, fighting infestation would be terrible. But this is actually acceptable. So overall, we got good damage. Well, actually, excellent damage compared to most foes. With my rib mod, there's a complete spot. There's a good freaking critical build there. Uh, toxic doesn't really affect the uh, infestation too much, but it does help slightly. So yeah, overall, pretty darn good. This is this works. I originally had the Daiku as a pretty poor opinion, but it's an acceptable one now. But now, question. Can you kill a level 100 or 150 corrupted heavy gunner? Well, yes. The Toxic can, anyway. <laughs> the actual damage from the bullet itself is pretty uh, minimalistic, but repeated shots with Toxin can, in fact, kill it. Thanks that nice high well, status chance. Again, procced with all that uh, puncture and toxic damage. So yes, although not really effective if you ask me. <laughs> Let's move on to the score. 
but I'm getting ahead of myself. First, let's do the pros and cons. On the pros, of all the bows, this one starts out as the strongest. At the start, anyway. I'm not going to call it the strongest, it simply starts as the strongest. It also has a good status chance, which is starting off at 50% for what it's worth. And it has a decent critical build still attached. Alright. On the cons, let's get the obvious elephant out of the room. You must charge up each shot, which is no other bow shares this trait. Okay, and I think I'm going to put it there, but it's more or less my opinion, but I'm going to do it anyway. The status build is a bit of a waste on this weapon. It's not built for status. It really isn't. If it's there, it helps, but I don't think anyone should really depend on it. Alright. Otherwise, it's okay. Now, let's go on to the score for the Daiku. Now, first off, damage, I'm going to give an 8 out of 10. This is a definitely a strong bow. Definitely so. Enough said. Design, I'm going to give a 6 out of 10. The must charge each shot is annoying and all, but at least it's balanced in that sense. Though it still probably makes it the least popular choice among the bows. Ammo wise, 8 out of 10. You're not going to run out of arrows with how you must charge each shot, no matter how fast you shoot them. Now, since we didn't do accuracy, since all bows kind of don't have any drop off and are fairly accurate, we're going to do speed. Which I'm going to give a 3 out of 10. The speed of this bow is the worst of all the bows, but. It could still be improved and used. I don't think I'll ever get anything. Hopefully I'll never find a bow that's slower than this. <laughs> this gun is out of a 7 out of 10. This weapon is actually good if put an effort into it. It'll definitely do the job, although maybe other bows could be better, but still this one's acceptable. That said, in total, the Daiku gets 32 out of 50. It's an exceptional bow. The river mods have saved this one for me. Okay, now we're moving on to Judgment. With Judgment, this is a bit of a gray ground. I still think it's not worth it. Despite what I said earlier, it's still not worth it in my mind. Because I can still take the Rakta Cernos, which I don't have to fix the speed, it's already fast enough. Or the Dread, when it's all powerful. Same thing can be said against the Paris Prime. All of them are powerful. The Daiku is too, but it's just too slow. When you have all the other bows lined up, the Daiku will probably be always chose last because how slow it is and you must charge up each shot. But that's my opinion. And that's showcase today. I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.